Well, hey guys, we are back. We have a new shop talk. We haven't done shop talk in a while, so we're kind of getting back into the groove of things. But we're finally going out for a quick overnight stay here in the spring, and we're going through our trucks and the gear and some new team members, getting everything back up to speed for our first outing of 2022. So last night as we were preparing for heading out today, uh, we made sure that all the trucks are plugged in and we, and we turned on all of our refrigerators so that as we go shopping today, we're not putting all of our cold food into warm refrigerators. Plus, it helped our batteries by being plugged in, letting those fridges pull down, use a lot of power. And right now, they're, everything's still at 100%, looking at their manager 30. Everything's good to go, so I feel confident that the fridge is fully cold, the battery is fully charged, and I can unplug it and go on the trip. So one other thing that we also plug in is the front of the truck, and we've put in, uh, I think this is a NOCO battery charger. It lives full time in the vehicle, and then when it's back in the shop, we just plug them in, and I know that my start battery is as maintained and as perfect as it can be. We need to get our X3 trailer into the hangar here so we can go through its systems and make sure the galley's ready to go. So this is up as high as it'll go and we have our lowest drop hitch and it's just about too high. So we'll see what happens here. Oh, it might make it on its own. We're good. Perfect. Stop. Oops. No problem. So that's in this pocket here. That's, that's the park. That's the smallest pack I've ever seen on the park. Yeah. Surely we would have that. Overnight kit. Some extra wipes, things like that. Sounds like they provide wipes, but yeah. if they're already packed, so I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Got a pillow, that's important. Got a frisbee. Yeah. That's I brought the, you know what? I brought we're all bringing side arms. I brought a book that Clay gave me. The oh, obstacles in the way. Good book. I, finished it. I haven't finished it yet. And then my headlamp. I don't know where that went. I'm already losing yeah. stuff and we haven't left. This is that. It does look dorky. No, not at all. But uh, you're going to stay warm with that. Mm -hmm. This is good. Uh, Tanner? Yeah. Are these in the truck or should I be bringing one? Uh, we try to have a few in each truck, but yeah, you can bring your own. You sure? Uh, you guys have them in the truck? You have iPhone? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, Rochelle, yeah. is there anything you want to avoid, like leaving in your room? Like what um, kind of stuff do you not like to have in here? Not have in here? Yeah. I would say any specialty items as we swap out with the team and different cooks come in. Mm -hmm. Any Anything they go to the store to buy for one meal, we try to avoid. Okay. Yeah. Um, we like to have things that can come across for, you can eat them for any meal you make. Yeah. The best of your that makes sense, yeah. yeah. So just general seasonings. Yep. So cool. I just do like lemon pepper, seasoning salt, taco seasoning, Garlic seasoning of some sort. Okay, good uh, to know. Yeah, salt pepper. Okay. So the other thing about towing the trailer with Adigan is we haven't really towed a trailer with Adigan, so we have a tow pro in it from Red Arc. We're just going to test everything to make sure everything's reading correctly. So we got the blue. So that means that it's already reading that we have a trailer with brakes on and it's set to zero. So once we start driving it, we'll probably turn it up to like three-ish. Um, that's, and then you can just kind of adjust it from there. Obviously you don't want to have the tires lock up when you hit the brakes. So you can just kind of adjust it on the fly and then it'll also learn and just read the g-forces as you're driving and it actually will help determine how much braking force is required at the time once we go off-road you can actually put it into an off-road mode and then it knows by the g-forces in the brain 
if you're climbing a steep hill or going down a really steep hill to know how much braking force to apply. So pretty cool system. So now we just got to make sure all the lights and turn signals are working through the plug. Cause again, we, I don't think we've ever hooked a trailer up to Attigan. So Sweet. it's all good. Yeah, she's empty. Temperature is going to be a thing on this trip. It's going to get down in the low twenties, maybe even the upper teens, not sure it's up in the mountains. So we just want to make sure we don't freeze to death in the middle of the night in the mountains. The Wobasto heater in here, not an issue. We go fast, we'll have a little little buddy heater in there, so it shouldn't be an issue. And then X3 Patriot Camper Trailer has its own heater system, which it's a hot water heater that also has a fan that blows the warmth from the hot water heater up into the tents, live-in tent system. So we should all be covered, but we're gonna check it just in case. So we have a Wabasto diesel heater in our X3 Tacoma that we installed in 2020. And so this is gonna be another time we're gonna use it. It's gonna get very chilly. So hasn't been used all winter. So I'm just gonna start it up, let it run, cycle, make sure everything's happy. Then we'll just shut it off. We know there's a ton of fuel in the tank, so we're good there. Oh, now my eyes are watering. I'm getting nervous, Brendan. The Wabasto system actually diagnoses itself and knows when it's been a while since it's been used. So it actually tells you, hey, run me so I can process everything that's in it and run it through so it doesn't get in there and gunk up over time is sitting. So it's just basically saying heater run required. So I'm just gonna hit start. And it's actually called, it says right there, preventative maintenance. And it's a 20 minute run time. So it's just gonna do its own thing for about 20 minutes and it's just like a self-diagnosing maintenance check essentially. Really cool system that you don't get on a lot of the cheaper ones. I'm swapping fuel cans for water cans, water jerrys. Frankly, we're gone for one night, 10 gallons of water. We're gonna be around a lot of other water if we happen to need it. Uh, so this is gonna be plenty for us. Regular scepter water, five gallons. We've had forever and then this is one of the new lifesavers well new to us lifesaver you can filter it so if we need more water we can run down to the the creek or the river or whatever fill this up and filter it and use it so we rolling and we're rolling i'm jimmy lewis i'm the content director and this is my first outing with expedition overland so i am very stoked this guy here this world of red arc is new to Jimmy Lewis. Um, it looks amazing. Andy assures me he knows how to operate it, so he's gonna teach me all about it. So I'm looking forward to that. What I do know something about is how to stay warm tonight, and that is gonna happen as a result, at least in theory, we have not put this into practice yet, but in theory, it's going to happen as a result of this little guy right here, the Mr. Buddy heater. So you always need to have airflow going on. You need to have something open, uh, allowing air in, and something open, allowing air out. And then there's enough heat in there to keep you warm. You can either use your standard one pound propane bottle to run these. But if you're going to be using them for a long time, if you want them to stay working all night or in a shanty all day, what you really want to do is have an auxiliary hose that you screw into this and then screw into a full propane bottle, like a 15 or 10 pound bottle. The one pounder will be fine for Andy and I tonight. Um, I've already, you can see how this just screws in here. And I'm taking it out because don't make the mistake I've made a bunch of times, which is you grab one of these and you really don't feel the weight and it's almost empty or empty and you are waiting for that wonderful heat and it's not there. So a fresh bottle, feed it in there. And that will at least give Andy and I enough heat at the start of the night to be warm and comfortable, but it'll run out probably in a few hours. The challenge with these is lighting the pilot light. So down here is the pilot light. And it takes a little finesse to get that to go. So 
to light the pilot, you push down, whew, she lit right up. Keep in mind, if you haven't run this for a while, you may have to do that move several times. Once the pilot is lit though, you push it down just a little bit and you make sure you are standing back from that because when the heat comes up, it's going to come up. And we, oh yeah, we have heat, which this is a spring overlanding themed outing and spring in Montana is dynamic and it can be cold, wet. Let's just say at the end of the day to have some heat in your camper or camp or whatever your sleeping arrangement is, is really, really nice. Yeah, you can't roll in. Hey, everybody, guys. Man. Watermelon, watermelon, watermelon. All right. Hey, guys, I'm Andy Potter. I'm the social media marketing manager for XO and one of my jobs for this trip is going to be going in and learning the electrical systems of Raven. Um, it's a new truck for me, and so what I'm doing now is I'm going through, coming through the systems just to see kind of how it works for us when we're getting in there potentially tonight. Um, so making sure everything's dialed, make sure batteries are good, um, solar is running, all that, so. Tanner, can you help me yeah. real quick? Yep, coming on. When it's green, that means it's either plugged in, it's getting solar, yeah. Yeah. and it's not getting, so, it's technically getting voltage, but not amperage. So, okay. And then once you are running either off the alternator or off true solar, you'll see if there's nothing really running, you'll see this actually point up that way and mm -hmm. turn green and show that charge is coming in. And then you'll be able to see it here too. Yeah, because it's out the charge and consumption. Yep, exactly. All right, so it looks like it's done with the cycle. Okay. Hey, All right. Yes. All right, so it looks like our heater finished running its maintenance cycle. I'm going to check to make sure everything looks good. Yep. It's all in the green, so all the heater systems are good. So last thing to do is get all the cameras loaded up, make sure the batteries are charged, cards are formatted, everything's good to go there. And I think we just need to get going. Need to bring the fun stuff. Thanks for joining us on this shop talk, guys. Check out our new series coming up. We're going to be taking these out and down the road, we're going to be trying to do more trips, more just getting out and about basically. So we'll see you guys down the road.